imagine this scenario. You're doing research online and you're wanting some kind of mineral supplement to purify your water. And you come across a product which is legal, sold on Amazon, eBay. It's a mineral supplement, sodium chloride. And it's known to allegedly cure cancer, HIV, AIDS. The Red Cross uses it to treat malaria. Our own US military has used it to treat the dreaded Ebola. And you purchase it, and you're using it to purify your water. And all of a sudden, you get a knock on the door. And it's the Department of Homeland Security with armed sheriffs. And they ask you to step outside. And you say, well, it's warmer inside. Why don't you come in? And they say, no, 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 no. We want to talk to you privately without, you know, your children. Because your, your seven children are inside. And you explain that you can have them go into the back of the house and you can have private. No, no, no. They want you outside. So you step outside. It's cold. You don't have a jacket. And then suddenly they hit you with a search warrant. And they refuse to allow you to go back into your home. But they enter your home. All these strangers now are entering your home with your young children inside. And you can't go inside your home. And you have to sit outside in the cold for two hours. Your neighbors come by and all those armed sheriffs go, stay back. You had guests coming over for dinner and they show up and they want to know what the hell is going on. And those armed sheriffs say, leave, leave. They can't even talk to you. You're just sitting on that porch. You have access to one window to see what's happening inside your home. All these strangers, these thug-looking people walking around your home with your children inside, and you have to remain outside for two hours. It goes on for five hours, and in the end, sheriffs and the Department of Homeland Security take your children away because you had a mineral supplement that was legal, that was known to purify water, that was sold on Amazon and eBay. Can you imagine living that nightmare? The details may be different in a whole lot of cases, but this is happening to so many families across our country. And if you're sitting listening to this and you're thinking, it can never happen to me, you are sadly mistaken. And you may be tragically mistaken one day. The Stanleys in Arkansas have had their kids taken away. They're now in state custody because they had a product called Miracle Mineral Treatment. It's alleged to be a remedy for cancer, for cancer and AIDS, and Red Cross uses it. Um, they were mostly using it to purify water, which is one of the known uses. But why is this really happening? I believe it's happening because the Stanleys did all they could to minimize government intrusion into their lives, and the government didn't like that. They homeschooled their children. Two graduated and are now in college. The other seven are still being homeschooled. They're um, considered preppers. Oh my God, our government gets to prep, but Americans, if they prep, they're nut jobs. It is so outrageous that this is happening, and I hope that you circulate it, and I really hope that you begin to wake up those who are in your lives thinking that this is not happening. It is happening. And so many people are suffering the consequences of our new police state. We are no longer the United States of America. We are no longer the freest country in the world. In fact, we are losing our freedoms rapidly every single 
day now. I'm not going to read this article. You can read how the pharmaceutical companies are demanding that these people don't buy this miracle mineral supplement and that they're wanting to make a shitload of money on sodium chloride that is going to be treating all of these illnesses. Yes, we know what is behind all of this and they're closing down companies that are selling it. It wasn't FDA approved and now our government has to approve everything. Everything now has to be approved by our government. That's what happens when you live in a fascist, tyrannical police state, which is what we are. And let me just point out before I read the email of the mother describing her nightmare that the FDA approved drugs, you know how many people die per year approximately? 100,000. How many people have died from this dangerous mineral supplement or other supplements? Zip. Zip. This just goes on endlessly. So, this is the email from the mother. I did not have the strength to call after all that happened today. I still haven't been able to fall asleep and I don't have much hope that I will. The Department of Homeland Security has come and stolen our kids from us under the guise of, quote unquote, protecting our children. For the first time since I gave birth to Madeline, I am away from all of my bambinos. Only Hal and I are here alone in this White House tonight. She's writing this email to people that she knows. The details are so many and I know you'll all want to know them. I will try to give a short account in this email and then fill you in more tomorrow over the phone. Last month, the Department of Homeland Security sent someone out to investigate a call made on their hotline, an anonymous caller. We are not a country ruled by law anymore. People don't even have to show any evidence. They can just make anonymous calls. A neighbor can hate you or have a grudge against you and want to throw your life into a nightmare, and they can do it like that just by giving an anonymous tip. It's outrageous that we allow this to go on. But how do we even know if the Department of Homeland Security got an anonymous tip? How do we know that they're not just making it up? And in this case, I believe it was the homeschooling of children that brought this nightmare to the Stanleys because they were investigated on an anonymous tip first and they were allowed into their home. And I bet somewhere in the report it said that they had this mineral supplement and that's what got them to take their kids away. So last month, the Department of Homeland Security sent someone out to investigate a call made on their hotline by an anonymous caller. The lady who called let us know that she was somewhat embarrassed by how silly the charge was against us, but that it was her job to investigate it anyway. We welcomed her into our home and she immediately knew that the charges were frivolous. The charges were that our kids were always running around barefoot, even in the snow, and that they were inadequately dressed. Also, that Hal had struck Christina on the face. We showed her some of the 200 and something pair of shoes and told her, actually the kids told her, actually the kids told the Department of Homeland Security investigator. How, why is the Department of Homeland Security involved in this? It, it's, well, because we're a police state. Anyway, the kids told the investigator that it was their preference to go barefoot and that it was like a tradition to briefly run out in the snow barefoot and take a picture of the footprints. We assured her that when they played in the snow, they all liked to wear multiple layers of clothing and bags over their feet to keep their shoes from getting wet and that they wore plastic gloves over the winter gloves to keep them from getting wet and cold too. Everyone in the family knew Hal had never hit Christina, so they all eagerly told her that wasn't true. She wrote her report and a couple of days ago, we got it in the mail, and it said that the charge was not valid or false. I don't remember the exact wording, but the report was that the charge was not true. Then today, we had plans for company to eat supper with us in the evening, and we got a call in the morning from the Department of Homeland Security saying that they got another phone call and that they had to come out just to ask some more questions. 
We planned it for the morning at 11, so it wouldn't interfere with our evening plans. Then he called back and said he had been called into a meeting with his supervisor and that he would probably be later. These are two of the thugs that showed up in the Stanley's home. Well, he never called back and never came. Then around 4.30, several people showed up at the, our door, all obviously here for the investigation, and we welcomed them in. However, they desired us to step outside in order to speak privately with Hal and I and not in front of the kids. I tried to tell them it was much warmer inside and that it was nothing for the kids to go to the back of the house for us to have privacy while talking. They refused and insisted on us stepping outside. It was freezing cold and neither Hal or I had on coats. After stepping outside, they issued us a search warrant and said we could not enter our house or talk to our kids until the search and the investigation was through. You could only imagine how hard it was to play it cool and not blow up at the injustice that started to unfold. We could not get our coats. We could not call a lawyer. We could not retrieve anything inside like a phone or a camera to record anything or call anyone. This is over a mineral supplement. They offered to let us sit in one of the 12 vehicles that ended up being in our driveway to keep warm. I blatantly refused, saying I was not going to sit somewhere. I could not have a view of my children and what all was going on in the house. So I sat on a chair on the porch facing our front win window and driveway, freezing cold. It was almost 30 minutes later before they retrieved our coats for us to put on. They said the charge was that we had a poisonous substance in our house and that the kids were being exposed to it and it endangered their welfare. Do you know how many products are in every American's homes that are dangerous and endanger the lives of everybody in their home? Oh, but those products are actually FDA approved and <laughs> corporations are making a whole lot of money from them, so that doesn't matter. The substance named in the report was MMS, Miracle mineral supplement that they used to purify their water. And we would have gladly given it to them without a search warrant because we knew nothing of the dangers of it from all our research. It is sold online as a water purifier and we are preppers so that is nothing unusual about us having it in our house. Never has it been used in any way to poison our kids or even expose them in such a way as to endanger their lives nor did we feel we were endangering them to have it in our house. They said they still had to have all the kids checked out by a doctor and be tested for MMS exposure. Of the 12 emergency state, county, federal vehicles over a mineral supplement, this is a rather dramatic play, don't you think? Of all those vehicles, one was an ambulance and there happened to be a doctor on board who would check them out without having to take them to the hospital. Each of the kids had to be interviewed, and our house was thoroughly searched everywhere for over two hours. Such invasion of privacy. Meanwhile, everyone we talked to at this point tried to be nice and answer our questions as best they could. We asked who made the charge, and if anyone could just make any accusation, and they have to act on the call regardless of its validity. They said it could be a hateful neighbor, a prank caller, someone with malicious intent, and they still would have to act on the call. The call was anonymous, and therefore the caller was protected while all our rights were taken away. I questioned what the possibility of our kids being taken away were if they deemed the charge true, knowing that they would find the MMS, which was not hidden since we didn't know of any danger it presented. They talked like the investigation would be drawn out over 45, over a 45 day period. And that it would just involve the kids going to Little Rock Hospital for the test to be done, hair follicles, blood work, and that there would be interviews and visits. We of course expressed our concerns as to what this would do to the kids since they've never been to the doctor for sickness or health issues and they've never been away from us in that type of setting. I insisted if we had to tolerate such an order that I or we as their parents at least be present with them while the procedures were done. Doesn't that sound reasonable? All our neighbors who passed by stopped and tried to find out what in the world was going on and they were all sent away with no explanation. Our guests 
who then arrived, tried to approach us on the porch, did not get far onto the property before she was approached forcefully with an in-your-face insistence that they leave. I yelled to her to take pictures of all the vehicles with her phone since we were not allowed to do anything to protect our own innocence at what they were doing to us. It was about two hours before we were let back into our house, and yet we still could not have any concerned neighbors come in and be witnesses on our side. They were back and forth all over our house, inside and outside, on the phone, and talking to us. There were over 13, I couldn't keep track how many, different authorities here. Our phone rang like crazy, and no one was allowed to answer it. Finally, one neighbor was able to come in, and our phone became ours again. During the times they weren't talking to us, I made calls to the guests we were expecting, and then some of our neighbors called to see what was going on. I couldn't tell them how it would end but that I'd call them back after they left and let them know what all happened. Our guests still planned to come over after they left. They were just driving around waiting for them to leave, and the whole time they were here, which ended up being around five hours, they kept saying, just a few more minutes, or I'm just waiting for one more phone call. There was never any hint that they would take our kids from us. They waited till 15 minutes before it was all over to come in from outside, six intimidating brute looking males and one Department of Homeland Security female all lined up in our den to tell us they would be taking our kids into their custody for 72 hours. Are you kidding me? All my niceties left me. I flipped out and told them that what they were doing to our kids was way worse than what they were accusing us of. They were totally unjust and didn't love our kids like we do, on and on crying at my helplessness to protect my own kids from total strangers who were going to take them away from us under the guise of protecting them. All the little kids were upset, and Hal and I and the girls were all crying and in shock. They started packing stuff up for our kids to have clothes and things while they were gone, and my head was spinning in a nightmarish state. They tried to calm me down. And I said I had every right to be upset with them because they were taking my babies from me. When I did come down for the kids' sake and try to comfort them, they ripped them away from us saying that we had already taken too much time and they had to go. I grabbed my camera and started following them to take pictures. The pictures did not come out very good because my mind couldn't function on how to operate the camera in such a frenzied state. It was on glitter mode, which makes all the bright lit stuff sparkle. I'm very disappointed I didn't get any pictures of all the people and vehicles that were there while it was still daylight. I still can't believe they are gone. I have no idea what will happen tomorrow or what comes next. Who snapped this picture? Perhaps one of the neighbors that was let in. I hate that, you know, you can read these articles and then suddenly you come across something and it's like, mm, then who, who snapped this picture? All right. It's, uh, we are living in the era of deception, so it's really, really, really hard to discern what's true and what's not. They have a Facebook page, Bring the Stanley Kids Home. So you can click on that and help them out. It's outrageous that this is taking place. It is taking place. Who snapped that picture? Oh, Jesus. Um, the only thing that I can think of is that it was snapped by a neighbor. Anyway, it does kind of make you wonder, and I can't stand that we're living in this age of deception. It is not an age that I like living in. So, this can happen to you. And the truth is, is that, you know, even there are so many stories now coming out on mainstream media that are false. That are false. But that's only 
That only goes to show how sick our society has become. Either way, either way, it, it doesn't reduce the sickness. In fact, if mainstream media is putting out these false reports about things that are occurring in the country, it really just, it really means that we're really sick <laughs> and we're still in trouble. So, thank you for listening and I do hope that you circulate this information and you try to wake up Americans to the best of your ability, that you just keep trying. Ciao, guys.